Now normally, whenever I'm doing a presentation about a picture, the two things I have to make sure I mention right at the beginning is who it's by and who it's of. But I wouldn't mind betting that most of you watching this clip know exactly those two facts. This is a screen print by Andy Warhol simply entitled Marilyn that was printed in a portfolio of 10 in 1967. 10 images, all exactly the same, except the colour, a classic Warholian technique. Now, whenever an artist decides that he wants to work, he or she wants to work in printmaking, obviously the first and most important decision they have to take is which technique to use. And if one looks back over the last four or five hundred years, one sees certain sweet spots where you get real artistic talent choosing exactly the right technique. It started perhaps with Dürer and engraving and then moved on to Rembrandt and etching and Toulouse-Lautrec and lithography, three of my personal favourites. And I think Warhol uh, is the fourth in line with that. We see when he chooses screen print, when he stumbles across it, uh, it's, it's a really, it's a match made in heaven. And there are various reasons for this. One of those, I think, is the fact that it allowed him to not only choose pop imagery, as he had been doing up until that point, sort of laboriously painting ads that he came across in newspapers, but he actually not only stole the images, but he stole the technique as well. So one has the Campbell soup can, but that is produced in the same technique as Campbell's printed their own soup labels with screen printing. Another advantage of it, and one that particularly matches Warhol, is that the technique involves laying down thick, very broad areas of ink, undifferentiated, sort of slab-like, as we see here. And that, in a way, mimics uh, Warhol's attitude. It's all on the surface. Uh, famously, he said, if you want to know about me or my art, it's all there, it's all on the surface, you don't have to look any deeper. I think in certain respects, this could be considered a self-portrait, because there's an amazing sort of similarity between Marilyn and Warhol. Warhol himself turned himself into an icon, a man that started by printing brands, turned himself into one, he became Brand Warhol. And I think with both artist and subject, what one looks at is one's trying to look below the, below the surface. Is that all there is with Marilyn? And one also thinks that whenever one sees Warhol uh, interviewed, as much as he tried to push you away, the viewer wants to know what did he really think, what was he really like beneath the surface. This is three foot square, it's printed in day glow colours, but I think in another respect, in fact, it's, it's rather traditional. It is, after all, a portrait, it's a female portrait. And he joins a long line of portrait painters uh, who worked over the previous sort of 500 years, who would have spent their time painting portraits of the rich and famous, just as Warhol did. And it's interesting to note that now, I think at a distance of 50 years, Warhol's prints have moved 180 degrees from being ephemeral, uh, uh, something of instant response and instant recognition, and now they're joined the, joining the pantheon of printmaking, and these are looked at every bit as closely as any of the previous works of art through the past 500 years.